Good evening. I'm going to go ahead and call us to order. It's 630. Uh, it's time for us to get started with our public hearing tonight on our millage rate. And if you'll bow with me, I'll lead us in our invocation. And after the invocation, we'll stand in pledge to both the American and the Georgia flag both. Dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for a wonderful day. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine. Thank you for allowing everyone to be here tonight. Lord, we are just so thankful and grateful to live in such a great nation and the freedoms that we all enjoy and, and being able to come and have an open government forum where people can come and speak and give input to their local government. And Lord, it's just a blessing to, to be, a great, be a part of this great country. Lord, we just pray for our leaders around the country, uh, our military, and Lord, we just ask you to protect them. Lord, we have a lot of people in our community that are sick right now and uh, with COVID and other illnesses and cancer. And Lord, we just ask for your healing hand for them and be with their families as they tend to them and care for them. Lord, as we come to this night of this meeting, we just ask that all things are said and done here tonight will honor and glorify you. Lord, we just give you all the praise. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 You'll stand, we'll pledge to the American flag and to the Georgia flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our Georgia state flag. I pledge allegiance to the Georgia flag and to the principles for which it stands, wisdom, justice, moderation, and courage. Thank you all. May be seated. Okay, as I call us to order, we'll ask the clerk to call the roll of the board for a quorum, please. Commissioner Blakemore. Present. Commissioner Askew. Here. Chairman Whitfield. Present. Commissioner Hart. Here. Commissioner Schultz. Present. All, right, all members of the board are present. Thank you for that. Uh, this is uh, our third and final meeting uh, for our public hearings for the board to consider adoption of a millage rate for the 2022 tax bills that will be going out soon. Uh, what has been advertised in the local paper uh, is the adoption of a millage rate to be set at 7.2 mills in the unincorporated area and 10.293 mills in the incorporated area. So at this time, um, the packets are in the back. If anyone doesn't have one, we'd ask you to, to, to grab a packet. And in those packets, you will see the, the advertisements of the millage rate we are required by state law to have three public hearings. And the main reason for those hearings is for the public to be able to come and speak so the public can be heard of any questions or concerns to their local government concerning the proposed millage rate. And then uh, once this agenda is finished, uh, if it's prior to seven o'clock, we will pause until seven o'clock before we go into our regular commission meeting where at that time, the board will take action on adopting and setting a millage rate uh, for our county government. So at this time, is there anyone that would like to come and speak? Uh, we would ask you to uh, come to the podium. We'll give you five minutes to speak. We do ask you that you state your name. In this part of our meeting, since it's a public hearing, we have to limit the topics to and about the agenda of the, of the millage rate or anything maybe concerning the budget. Those are related. <coughs> But then if you have other items of discussion, that will be in the second part of our meeting where we do our public comments where you can speak on any topic. So you'll get an opportunity to speak, but this first hearing time is to talk about the millage rate and how it affects the budget. So uh, again, I think you wanted to be first. So if you'll come up to the podium, please, and if let you speak your name, we'll give you five minutes to speak, sir. Okay, my name is Ken McCurry. Uh, have lived in this county for a little over 40 years. And the thing about millage rates and, and what it does to property taxes has been a concern of mine for a long time. Uh, our neighboring county has addressed this issue some years ago. And they addressed it by removing school tax from property taxes completely at the age of 75. Uh, and considering 
you know, what the school board has proposed and so forth. I would just like for each one of y'all to consider those people, like myself, retired on a fixed income and looking at the amount of increase that's going to be on our properties. It's going to be a considerable amount. If I understood it correctly, about over 6%. That's a big jump of property taxes. And I understand that, you know, there are certain things that y'all can do, certain things maybe that you cannot do. I'm just asking on behalf of every senior citizen in this county that this is something that should be considered within the discussion of what you do and how you do it. I thank you. I appreciate it very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else like to speak concerning the millage rate? Okay. Yeah, Chris, yeah, come on up, sir. Please state your name so everybody knows who you are. <laughs> I'm Chris R. I'm the district attorney, um, and I try and get around to all the county meetings when they're considering the budget because um, I am part of the budget request is what I've requested from the commissioners. Uh, so I like to let the public know why I'm asking for what I'm asking for. And this year, we're uh, basically the entirety of our increase is based on increased personnel costs. Um, our retirement costs went up dramatically um, this year, and they didn't bother telling us that until June um, when they had, we had to start paying it July 1. Um, our benefits cost went up. And in our original budget request, we had, we had eight open positions. Um, we filled a few of those and so gave Commissioner Whitfield the updated numbers yesterday, uh, which has reduced it somewhat when we saw that some of those folks didn't select the higher end, which we have to budget at. Uh, and then um, some, we're, our, our office is a little bit different in how it's set up. We are partially funded by the state and partially funded by the four counties of the circuit which including in Walker, also Dade, Catoosa, and Chattooga. Um, and um, the, we've always treated our employees the same and followed the pay scale set by the Prosecuting Attorneys Council for the state of Georgia. This year, the state increased that and added a, a raise uh, to try and get competitive. We have record vacancies in the state for prosecutors right now. It's just hard to, nobody, you know, like the Sheriff's Department's having a hard time getting officers, we're having a hard time getting folks, attorneys that want to be prosecutors. Um, and so there's just incredible competition. The Metro counties are paying fifty and $60,000 above scale, which is more than we pay total. Um, so we want to just be able to match that and keep people sometimes <coughs> sitting in the same office at two different desks that are doing the same job on an equal footing to keep the morale up. And, let them know our citizens care about what they do, value what they do, so we can keep folks we've got, and we can stop you know the turnover we had been experiencing. We, you know, we've not lost an, an attorney uh, in a, a little while now, so I'd like to keep it that way. It's hard to recruit them, but once we get them here and get them trained, I'd like to keep the folks that we've got. And so that's really the basis of my request this year, and I know it's an difficult spot you're all in, you gotta juggle the different needs of, you know, somebody may look at the transit and think, oh, I don't use that, and well, it might be critical to another citizen. And so those are tough decisions, but you know, one of the essential functions of government is public safety and running a criminal justice system. It's one of the very reasons government exists, is to do that, and of course, the Sheriff's Department's probably the largest part of y'all's budget, and we're, I think, about 2% overall of Walker County's budget for the DA's office. Uh, if, if my request goes through, we'd be about 2% of y'all's budget. Uh, I think that's a pretty good bargain for what we do. Uh, unlike most of the state, we worked our tail off during the whole pandemic and are in much better shape than most of the rest of the state. And I'd just like to reward my folks for the hard work that they've done and keep them. So thank y'all. Thank you. Okay, anyone else that'd like to speak on the millage? All right, uh, at this time on our agenda, we'll go to the next item. We do have uh, opportunity for commissioner comments at this time on the millage. So we'll start with District 1, Commissioner Blakemore. 
just appreciate everybody getting involved and letting us know how you feel about it, and we'll make the best decision we possibly can for all the citizens of Walker County. Uh, yeah, and I, I'll just I just want to add that uh, it uh, our chairman Whitfield's worked real hard on this millage and uh, worked real hard on the budget as well. And so, as Commissioner Blackmore said, we're going to take take into consideration all the information that we've been given, and we're going to try to do the best thing that we can to help everybody and be fair across the board. Very good, Commissioner. Hart? I concur, Robert. Yes, sir. I want to thank everyone for coming tonight, and Mr. Chair, thank you very much for talking with us and working with us and uh, so uh, looking forward to uh, doing the right thing for the taxpayers. Very good. Okay, at this time we will uh, close our public hearing and so we will stand adjourned until 7 o'clock because uh, we have to wait to officially start our second meeting at 7 o'clock. So we'll stand adjourned for uh, about 18 more minutes. So y'all just bear with us and we'll be back in about 18 minutes. Thank you. <coughs>